Alrighty guys, and welcome back to more Bravely Second. We are here about to go talk to Alfred to see if we can get any details on this shield. Apparently we have to talk to I don't think we have to talk to Alfred, but we'll talk to him. Alright, cool. Look at this. No matter how many times I come here, I just can't get over how swanky this place is. Marble floors polished to a sheen. Gold-plated fixtures. It makes my place back home look kind of pathetic. You do have that massive rack of weapons next to your bed, though. That's pretty impressive. In its own way. It is quite a collection, isn't it? But this place just oozes history. You must have loads of amazing weapons here, too. Indeed, milady. A sword so sharp it can cut through a dragon's hide as if it was silk. A bejeweled scimitar that can pierce the thickest plate mail. An enchanted shield that dulls any blade. The House Genealogia Armory is positively bursting with wonders such as these, and many more besides. All those treasures and you keep them stored out of sight? Noble and modest. What a family. <laughs> a keen observation from a true lady of Eternia. But in truth, the weapons are hidden for reasons beyond mere modesty. I am reminded of the words of a forefather of House Genioja passed down to me by my predecessor. Uh, perhaps you will indulge me? It is a fine thing to have a mighty weapon, but it is even finer to never wield it. Oft times, the mere knowledge that you possess great power will suffice to discourage conflict. Justice must be backed by might. This is true. But when it is delivered at sword point, it is little more than intimidation. Throughout its long and proud history, House Genioja has protected the people of this land with justice and might. But when armies must be mobilized to force obedience, that is a justice not worthy of the name. Now that I recall, there is another famous House Genioja proverb about shields. A stout shield is a fine thing indeed, but a world with no need for shields is all the finer. When people are well shielded, they can live without constant fear of the sword. There can be no denying this. But tell me, what is true peace of mind? Is it knowing a stout shield stands between you and a relentless foe? I think not. It is in knowing that you are safe from harm without a shield to keep such dangers at bay. Such are the ideals House Genioja espouses. This is why you will not see arms or armor adorning the walls of this manor. Or at least, this is what I have come to believe in my many years of service here. I see. So, ideally, a nation should have both swords and shields, but should have the need for neither. Alrighty then, so now we gotta go to the Elder and Old Sagitta. All this is apparently optional, but we might as well just view it, because it's in the game. Right, so, whoa, who's this dude? He ain't trying to rob me. I'll, I'll knock you out right now, man. <laughs> Alright, we just, we, we knocked that man out, alright? We, we had to set him straight. He limping now, he limping now. T-Dog don't play that. T-Dog don't play that. <laughs> T-Dog, don't play that. Alright. So now we need to go to Old Sagitta. Um, I'm just going to autopilot there because it's always faster to find it this way. Mm, the town, Sagitta Village. Homeboy, don't play that. <laughs> So the Sagitta Elder, and I forgot the other two people we had to talk to. Is the Elder still up? Is he still available? Here we go. You return, my friends. A welcome sight. What brings you back to the home of the Sagitta? 
The SP Cannon has the power to annihilate any foe. If a strong sword is truly needed to rule a people, the Sajida would know. I would seek your wisdom, Elder. And I would hope that I have the wisdom you seek, my child. You have in your village a super weapon capable of blasting balls clear out of the sky. Yes, I suppose we do. Well, I was just wondering, do you think you could still lead your people without that power? So you would follow in your father's illustrious footsteps, Idia Lee. I am a humble elder of a sleepy hamlet in the clouds. I fear my advice would have little value to one who would rule a great nation. But I will answer you. Yes, the SP Cannon is a weapon with the power to destroy our mortal foe. Such power might seem excessive and unbefitting our small mountain village. And yet there are Baals everywhere, and they threaten not just our people, but all who live in this world. Left unchecked, these fiends would destroy humanity, and we have the power to stop them. Whether this power is essential to govern my people, I cannot say, but it is a power that I would be a fool to relinquish. But what if someone tried to use this great power for evil? What then? This is, of course, a danger. Why, even used in good faith, an artifact of such power can have unforeseen and terrible consequences. But if we rejected this power out of fear, then what would happen to this world? Our foes would still be there, and who would hold them in check? When confronted with an unrelenting foe, what responsible leader would not take weapon in hand and destroy them? Hmm... Your mind hears my words, yet your heart remains unconvinced. No, it's not that. It's just... It is all right, child. It is good to doubt. The question of how best to rule a nation is one with no easy answer. Maybe the sword is the answer. Hmm. Alrighty, so now what we can do, we can go all the way to Ant Chime. We don't have to do any of this. This is not even, uh, uh, this isn't even mandatory for to do, to do for this side quest, but it's nice to have some, um, some extra dialogue on the matter, right? So we're gonna go view this last one. I think there's like two more or three more people we can talk to, but I'm not gonna talk to everybody. <laughs> so we're gonna go to Ant Chime. Ant Chime. Autopilot, uh, should be in, not in the eyes in the arena. Arena, did I say arena? I meant to say area. I meant to say area, damn it. So he should be in like the main area. How are we supposed to work if there's no water? Ha! Ah, I'm too weak to even rage! I can't even... I'm too salty to sweat! The salt is just absorbing the sweat? <laughs> Alright, this... That's not the guy. This guy? Here we go. Ah, Idia. It is always a pleasure to welcome you. Prime Minister, I heard that in times of war, Anchime's factories would turn out airships by the dozen. This is true, and the vast majority of them were commissioned by Eternia. Why do you ask? I've always wondered. You have all this industry and technology at your disposal, but Anchime has never had a standing army. I mean, you can forge all kinds of powerful weapons, but you don't use any for yourselves. What a curious observation, Miss Idia. Are you trying to encourage us to mobilize for war? What? Oh, no. Just, you know, speaking hypothetically. Ah, say no more, I understand. You have decided to follow in your father's footsteps, yes? 
You ask because you would know for yourself what it takes to rule a nation. Ansheim has access to weapons of great power, and yet we choose not to use them. Why not, you wonder? I do. So, why not? As you know, I am a descendant of the Harina dynasty that once ruled this continent. But at around the time when the sands came to swallow the land, my forefathers fell to the Cammers, ancestors of the former king. Though it boasted one of the mightiest armies in the land, the Harina dynasty could not halt the march of time. Born in exile, I immersed myself in books, studying the history of nations, of power and might. Meanwhile, King Kammer devoted himself to industry. He dreamed of one day commanding an airship fleet that would rival the duchies. A dream that, like so many dreams out here, was built on sand. As Prime Minister, I chose to divert military funding to education. The strength to crush our foes became the strength to grow our nation. In other words... You chose to fight with knowledge and learning instead of force. Precisely. These days, nearly all of the former Ansheim defense budget has been redirected to Al Campus. But what if someone were to attack you? An army of scholars isn't going to stop anyone. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Remember, this nation is renowned for its industrial and technological prowess and the greatest minds of our generation are gathered in our campus. We can build weapons whenever we want. Meaning? We are not a nation of pacifists. If provoked, we will not hesitate to fight back. If needed, we have the means to cut down our foes. But we will unsheathe our sword only when it is truly needed. Right, that makes sense. Thank you for your time, Prime Minister. If my advice has been of use to you as you follow in your father's great footsteps, this is all the thanks I need. So don't brandish a big sword, but be sure to have one ready when you need it. Basically, it was self-defense, dog. I killed him in self-defense. Wait, there's something here. We never got it. Is it in the throne? Wow. Really, bro? We never got that? Anyway... Well, there's one more guy we can talk to. And that's good good old Goodman. Good old Goodman in the, uh... In the fireplace. What do you call that player? Heartschild? 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 So let's get ready to, uh, roll out. We're gonna autopilot all the way to Eternal. No. I think it's Aizen. Then we go to Heart Child. Here we go. They're still, damn, they're still having his party. This party's been on for like the last three years, dude. This party's been going on for such a long time. Man, the most delicious cake in the world. We gotta talk to Goodman. He's probably in his house. The only house we could actually go into right now, which is funny. Anything that- Oh, magic attack right here. Anything that gives us magic attack? Nope. Sky Garb Knight. We'll buy that. I mean, why not? Might as well give it to her. I think that's her original outfit. There we go. This sounds like some One Piece music when they're like in a village town eating barbecue, Sanji cooking, and getting drunk. Please make yourself at home. Mm. Oh wow, we got some basalm. How did we miss this the first time? 
Oh, we can't go in the basement. It was a murder here. We had to fight. We had to fight the damn ninja, Konoichi. And we got some rare cheese. Goodman was not out of his house? What the hell, Goodman? You better not still be on the bridge, my dude. Goodman better not be out of his bridge. So let's go to the, uh, the, um... Let's go over here to... What do you call this place? The bridge? Apparently he is here. I just looked at the chat. Alright, so he's on this bridge area. Goodman, dude, I need to talk to you, my dude. Hail, Idia. What brings you back to Eisenberg? The shield bearers fought the sword bearers by building unbreakable defenses. So, is it better to rule a nation by the shield? In these past few years, you faced a coup d'etat, civil war, and relentless attacks by the Empire. And yet, under your command, the shield bearers held strong and repelled every threat. Commander Goodman, I would hear from you how a ruler might best defend his nation. A weighty question indeed. I take it you are preparing to follow in your father's footsteps. Very well. Compared to the Duchy of Eternia, ours is a humble nation. But I will offer what advice I can. The defense of a country relies solely on the soundness and strength of its shield. No matter how many times it is struck, no matter how powerful the blows that rain down, it must not bend or buckle. This music. It must absorb all harm so that no injury, no pain befalls the bearer. Now, this is how I built our shield. First, I drew a sharp line between the soldiery and citizenry. It is the former's duty to defend the latter. I saw to it that my men were provided with the strongest armor and stoutest shields, enough to protect them completely. So equipped, they could absorb every attack for as long as it took to exhaust our foes and sap them of the will to fight. This was the doctrine of the shield bearers, and now that of the Eisenberg army. Of course, some argue that our approach is too rigid, too simplistic. Why not put greater focus on offensive power or mobility? I myself once entertained such ideas, and I was not the first shield bearer commander to do so. Were we to divert more of our forces to the offensive, we could weaken the enemy's assault, relieving the burden of defense. But doing so would thin our defensive line and might even afford the enemy a way to break through. We have one duty and one alone, to protect the citizens of Eisenberg. An approach that would put them at risk, even were it to improve our efficiency, is not an approach I am willing to take. And even with the nation united, you will continue to mold the Eisenberg army into a defensive force? For as long as war troubles this world and peace eludes us, I will. A world without war is hard to imagine. I think we will always have need of a strong defense. It is my sworn duty to protect the people. I, for one, shall never lay down my shield. <sighs> so should I choose the shield? Shield of the sword, shield of the sword, or both. I choose both. You can't have it all. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, you can. Yes, no, I can't. Got Bugs Bunny. I Bugs bunny myself. Alright, here we go. Mithril Spear. Give me that chest. Alright, let's be on our way to the damn cave, man. We spent like a good 15 minutes just talking to idiots. Talking to wise old men. So once again, we want to go to the Uyana region. Bam. And we're going to autopilot to the Chompshire because that's the quickest area. Here we go. We got this. So now, saving the game. We're going to take a short break. And once again, on the next episode, we should be finished with this side quest. We didn't have to do any of that, by the way. But I just decided to do it.